so my role or my task in the sand week were like typically dealing with the supplier and handle the supply chain management related activities so and i don't know abcd of the coding as well you can consider it as a 2.75 or something as a ctc you are getting a 17 or 18k in today's era it will not be sufficient to cope up with your uh, monthly expenses so he showed me like yeah you can use power bi to deal with the data you can create the graphs and all those things so after graduating from college someone started working as a field engineer or you can say a supply chain engineer that too with a very minimal salary of somewhere 2.5 lakhs per annum but one day from his colleague he heard about the data analytics and dashboarding and he was so enthusiastic that he started exploring it and continuing with that motivation he successfully switched his career from field engineer to data analyst and this is the amazing story which we will be covering in our podcast today so make sure if you also belong to such kind of job profiles and earning this much of salary and looking forward to kick start your career in the data analytics domain then make sure to watch this podcast till the very end you will be learning a lot and very soon i am going to drop a amazing surprise for you all and if you want to know more about that surprise make sure to join my telegram channel link is in the description so now let's get started with the podcast so thank you so much mayu for joining us in today's podcast really excited to have you can you give a quick introduction about yourself your academic background past and current professional background to our audience so this is mayu uh, i have completed my graduation in mechanical engineering in 2019 and i have two years of work experience so i have worked for sandwich mining and rock technology as a sourcing engineer which is typically considered as a supply chain management department and currently i am i am working for a gallagher service center as a, i have joined the gallagher service center as a analyst data science so i will be working in a data science team share something about your life before becoming a data analyst like uh, most of us is typically start from our engineering life so what happened with you there what were your future plans after that how did you get your first job first salary so share those moments with us so as i said i completed my graduation in mechanical engineering so mechanical is considered as a core field right so i was dreaming for to get a job in a mechanical itself in a mechanical core field itself. so i tried for to get a job but i mean uh, from engineering background i mean we all aware of the covid situation so i mean after one and half year i got a job in a sandvik mining and doctor technology so i joined sandvik as a graduate apprentice so for first year i worked there as a apprentice trainee and after the completing that one year trainee uh, i got extension there itself so for next year i will be i work there as a a uh, sourcing engineer on a third party contractual role so my role or my task in the sandvik were like typically dealing with the supplier and handle the supply chain management related activities so you can consider that as i was i have to interact with the supplier master price master and erp tools so uh, it was a core mechanical job only in this job like was it more field job oriented or some technical uh, exposure you also got there while working on this role yeah so as i said it a core mechanical job so yeah i had uh, some technical exposure as well but as i said it's a supply chain role so i had to visit the suppliers very often on or you can say on the frequency of uh, twice or thrice a week so i need to uh, visit the suppliers i need to go at there and and inspect the procedures and all those things yeah so it was quite a uh, 50 per, uh, you can say 50% of uh, traveling job okay in conclusion we can say that right before this job itself right you had no connection with coding cs tech anything like that no 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 not no not at all i mean i was uh, try to find a job in a mechanical itself and i was focusing on mechanical field only so before this i mean i don't have any i mean i don't have glimpse of and i don't know abcd of the coding as well so mayur when you were working as a supply chain engineer how much salary you were getting uh, at that time i joined uh, i mean i started my career as a, a trainee engineer like i started my career through apprenticeship only so initially i was getting only stipend so it was around 15 to 16k and later i got extension so uh, i mean when you get extension from trainee to uh, supply chain engineer so they want give you that much hike in that field so i was getting around 17 to 18k as my take home salary in that a uh, supply chain role. so somewhere like 2 lakhs 2.5 lakhs per annum yeah yeah i mean you can consider it as a 2.75 or something mm-hmm. as a ctc working on the supply chain operation role that too with very less salary how challenging that phase uh, was for you and what was the prime reason that you did not continue with with that job because see everyone's dream is to get a good money good job pay right, right. 
so what kind of phase that was for you i mean uh, actually i mean when you have to work for a supply chain management so i mean you don't uh, bound yourself for 8 hours only when you visit the suppliers you have to stay there at for late night or you need to extend your working hours as well so when you put the extra efforts so you expect you should get paid well or not well you should get a sufficient amount to sustain or to make up the expenses right so i mean if you can understand if you are getting a 17 or 18k in today's era it will not be sufficient to cope up with your uh, monthly expenses so that's where i started searching for the uh, new career phase or look, i started looking for a career transition so yeah it was really tough when you need to uh, i mean for extra efforts you need to visit the suppliers and uh, work for 9 to 10 hours per day so yeah it was really tough to i mean adjust in such a sudden i think now this is the interesting question so uh, whenever someone makes a career switch or career move obviously there there is a motivation factor either yeah. they get inspired by their friends colleagues or someone else so yeah. like when and how did you get the motivation to quit your job and and explore data analytics related job profiles okay so i mean i would like to share a short story i mean which is behind this scenario so as i said i was dealing with the supply chain uh, i mean supplier master price master and our item master related thing so it was a huge data set i need to deal with and i i was working on those those data set we using excel only so uh, one of my colleague at that time was using power bi tool so he showed me like yeah you can use power bi to deal with the data you can create the graphs and all those thing and at the same time one of my friend was uh, doing this data science course so he also told me that yeah you can explore this career and so so i started exploring the things related to data science what i can learn what i can uh, do or what all opportunities i have in data science field so uh, i started exploring and i find myself interested in data science field so i have joined myself uh, i mean i registered myself for a boot camp so yeah that was the particular thing i mean my colleague and my friends uh, motivated me to uh, join this or uh, to make a career transition and once you uh, explore the things related to data science field you will definitely find interest interesting one follow up question which i would like to ask that is uh, it takes courage right to quit your current job and explore something else so how did you gather that that courage because uh, at least 17 thousand or 18 thousand you were earning something but quitting your job joining some boot camp like were you even sure yeah. that would you be able to make into it yeah the thing is i mean if you have interest in that towards that particular thing you will find the courage and also i mean if you know want yourself to keep updated and to you want to stand in the future i mean the competition which you are going to face in the future so i mean we, we are all aware that data science and ai related things are the future and i i was aware that not only in it field data science and ai things will be there in mechanical industry as well so in order to withstand with uh, a future computer com- competition you need to update yourself and also there was a motivation behind which i told you earlier yeah. so yeah i think it and i started uh, registering myself for data science the overall journey you have so far like before joining the boot camps and even when you started with the boot camp i'm assuming this journey wouldn't have been that easy for you so yeah like what kind of skill sets let's say once once you were clear in your mind that i will go for this domain what kind of skill sets did you acquire step by step and how also how much time did it take for you to become job ready okay so i uh, mean uh, i have the motivation to join the data science field so one of my friend was already doing and from my friends i got to know that odin school is offering a boot camp or extensive boot camp from which you will get to uh, you will be a job ready in the data science field so yeah i have joined the data science boot camp at odin school and from there the very first session they delivered us is like the overview of boot camp or whatever you going to do or what skills you will be learning in the data science boot camp and how will be your road map i mean they explain all those things so to be a data science professional i mean they have explain the a 7 to 8 skills which you wish you should have apart from the coding and it skills where they have mentioned some skills i will mention those skills so like i mean you should be aware of the stat- you should have fair knowledge of statistics along with the coding skills like python along with python you should have fair knowledge of uh, sql and then some machine learning concepts like uh, or data science related concept like uh, eda and machine learning so these are five to six must have skills if you want to become a data science professional i may ask one more follow up question because uh, a lot of time i have heard from people or this is a kind of question i keep on getting whether 
maths is very much like important to uh, become a data analyst or a data scientist and similarly master's degree so can can you uh, throw some light on that uh, what's the importance of these two actually uh, i mean i don't think so because i mean school before joining the data science boot camp even i was in the uh, i have those questions like i mean you are bro you are switching the career in data science field so you will be aware of heavy statistical concept and you will be needing to perform heavy math calculations but after joining the data science boot camp i got to know that no i mean you should have some sort of knowledge of uh, statistical concept and you should have some i mean minimal grip on the mathematical concept it's not that you need to perform heavy calculation because for that you will learn or you will gain uh, python like skills so uh, yeah, it will perform calculations for you but to do that or to be a, uh, to have to get the feel of the data science you should be aware of the basic concept at least so it's not like that you need uh, much of this things but basic concept will be sufficient being from like zero coding background which skill set did you find the most difficult to acquire and also when you started acquiring those skill set and considering your past background what kind of challenges did you face during that phase uh, so i mean as you have mentioned only that i belongs to non coding or zero coding background so i mean the very uh, basic i mean very uh, i would say very important skill which you need to have is python and uh, this is i mean python is the only skill which i fair fair challenging because you, when you know nothing about the coding and you have to start from the scratch so it was quite difficult for you to uh, get the uh, feel of those concepts and all those things so yeah it was quite challenging for me to get to know the python and use the python or uh, for your data science related purpose so uh, yeah uh, uh, initially day, in initial days i need to practice a lot on the python but yeah when you do constant practice you will get a feel and you will be you will surely be able to use the python for your purpose or uh, like any other challenge did you face while like why yeah uh, i would yeah, yeah 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 i would like to mention here that as i have mentioned uh, five to six skills right so i mean it's not like that you can learn one skill at a time and after finishing that skill you need to learn another skill so uh you should be you should have uh, you should maintain your time table that you will be giving a, a specific time for each skill on each day so that uh, you will be in constant touch with each skill so because you are going to need every skill and at every point in your data science skill so i mean uh, data science i would yeah, i would not say it's tough but yeah it has vast syllabus and you need to cover up that vast syllabus so yeah that was quite challenging to grab the knowledge or to have the hold on uh, all these four skills at the same time but yeah practice makes you uh, i mean gives you that uh, ability to uh, have the hold on this all sets yeah so yeah it is uh, it, it has lot more concepts to learn so once uh, you covered the 80 85% of the boot camp i'm pretty sure you would have started looking for the job as well so yeah, can, can you mention like did you face rejection in the job interviews because of your background like not having prior experience in data analytics not having cs degree or anything like that if yes if there was any sort of rejection then how did you convince the interviewers in your next interview that you are a good fit for for this job okay so to be honest i mean uh, in order to be a data science professional or you in order to grab a job in a data science field uh companies most of the time companies will ask for the experience i mean at least you should have the experience of 2 years and all but uh, i mean if you have that kind of knowledge or be and if you can able to convince the interview that uh, even if you are from non technical background but yeah data science is all about i mean 50% about the technical skills and 50% about the domain knowledge so you can uh, so the way i convinced the interview was like yeah even if i belongs to non technical background i have that much knowledge of the domains which i can deliver and uh, i can acquire the extra knowledge which domains require so yes i mean uh, being a fresher and uh, from a non technical background it was tough for me to uh, uh, find the job opportunities initially but yeah once you get the job opportunity you can uh, convince interviewer based on your skills okay, so while shortlisting your profile did anyone raise this point directly in in uh, in front of you that hey we won't be going ahead with your profile because you did not have that x factor actually i mean uh, uh, the interview uh, this is my first interview interview and i cracked that but yeah i have faced uh, some kind of scenarios like if if you are from non technical background and if you don't have experience they want your shortlist your profile sometimes 
so i mean instead of facing rejection i mean uh, you find it difficult to get the opportunity to appear for interview mm-hmm. only share or probably summarize your interview experience as well like what type of questions a candidate should expect from the interviewers and if it would be better if you can break it down uh, round wise like interview round wise also after successful transition into this data analyst role how much salary you are getting now so uh, i'll start with the interview process only so i mean whether you are a fresher or you belong to non technical background when you went for a data science interview so for my interview it was like walk in interview for the first so i went for a walk in so there they conducted a screening test so which was more of like aptitude and technical question combination of aptitude and technical once you clear that technical uh, interview they will be having another uh, technical assessment they will share the technical assessment with you so in that i mean if you are applying for a data analyst role surely you will get the data set and they will ask you to perform the eda on that data and find some insights so yeah the technical uh, the technical assessment which they shared with me it was like they have shared the data set and asked me to find some insights on that so uh, if we find the meaningful insights so i mean and if you manage to create crack that round then there will be a next round that is virtual technical interview in which they will ask you about some technical concept which may be belongs to uh, some sql and python in that they will ask you the questions around your project whatever you have done and your project your problem statement and what you did in that particular project what insights you got from that project and what new skills or what uh, where do you feel uh, feel challenging in that particular project so it was mostly around your uh, the point questions will be mostly around your project only and then yeah if you are giving the interview for data science field then there will be surely questions from machine learning and eda concepts so they will ask some questions around the machine learning models as well so they will ask you to explain some machine learning models along with some statistical concept like the g test and t test so yeah so if you manage to crack that interview then there will be uh, another interview round happen so it was typically a managerial round so manager will will get in touch with you and will uh, explain you the work profile or what we what he expects from you and it was like more of behavioral ground only so he will ask you about i mean uh, some basic concepts of a data science field and then it was like informal discussion like uh, will you able to relocate and that so that was particular behavioral ground so as i was i already mentioned that i was working in a supply chain management and i was getting a salary somewhere around uh, 17 to 18k so but now as i have made the career transition in data science field so i could have managed to get a package of 6 lpa okay so yeah so this is wonderful uh, my you like is very inspiring story first of all and uh, the way you managed yourself to move from the supply chain engineer background to data analyst i'm pretty sure a lot of people will get inspired from your journey so thanks a lot for joining us today and sharing your wonderful experience with us and Also, if you want to kickstart your journey in the data analytics domain, then do check out the upcoming bootcamp by the Rodin School. Link is in the description. So, thank you so much, uh, Mayur, from my side and from the entire audience side. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Sashank. So that is what I had in this amazing podcast. I hope you would have enjoyed the entire journey and experience of Mayur, and you are also feeling motivated now to become a data analyst. If yes you find it informative make sure to give a like if you are new to the channel then make sure to hit the subscribe button and press the notification icon and i will see you guys really soon with another amazing podcast till then just keep exploring data